Hey guys, Jennifer here and welcome to The Family Fudge. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the food storage system I've been working on for my family. I'll be sharing my best tips and tricks when it comes to food storage, as well as my top 20 items that I always try to keep on hand in case of an emergency. Now, I know the words food storage can feel overwhelming, totally foreign, or straight up extreme to some people, and that's totally fine. But for me, food storage is an idea that I grew up with. In this video, I'm just here to share what's been working for my family, just in case you're looking for some inspiration. But really, when it comes down to it, what works for my family might not work for yours, and that's okay. With moving to a state that is affected by hurricanes several times a year, and with how the stores have been recently, I knew it was time to take a better inventory and get everything in order. Because you guys, at the end of the day, I love my family and I want to protect them. Whether it's an emergency, an illness, a job loss, or even a natural disaster, I still want to be able to provide for them and protect them. And that's really what having a food storage system is all about. Now, before I get on to my list of 20 items, I wanted to share a little bit about my philosophy when it comes to food storage. First of all, I do not believe in panic buying or shelf clearing for that matter. So please don't think you need to run out to the store right now and spend a fortune. Keep in mind, I've literally spent years gathering these items slowly over time and as my budget would allow. If you're just getting started, I recommend picking up one or two extra things each time you go to the store and definitely shop sales as much as possible. Next, when it comes to food storage, I 100% believe in the phrase, store what you eat and eat what you store. That means I do not buy or store foods that my family doesn't want to eat. Now, I also believe in having a working pantry. And what that means is that I'm constantly rotating, using, and replacing items in my stockpile. That way, nothing goes to waste. And as I'm using and replacing items, I'm making sure to rotate them so that the older items are in front and they get used first. Next, in my food storage system, I've broken everything down into three main components. First, I have my short-term supply. So that means foods that last at least six months to one year. Then I have my medium-term supply, and those are foods that last for two years or more. And then finally, I have my long-term food storage. And those are foods that can last five years or more. I'm talking way more. I have some things that last up to 30 years, no joke. And then finally, I also have set up three different spaces in my house where I store the food. The first area is my house pantry, and I'll go ahead and link that video down below if you wanna check it out. This is where I keep foods that we use pretty much on a daily daily basis. The next area is what I like to call my prepper pantry. Now for this space, my sweet hubby definitely helped me out. He built me some inexpensive but very sturdy shelves in this little hallway area between the living room and our garage. And unlike my garage, which gets super hot and humid, since this space is climate controlled and I don't get any creepy crawlies in here, this is the perfect extra pantry space for my family. And then finally, there's the garage. This is where I keep most of our long-term food storage. I also have our old fridge in here and a small chest freezer for storage as well. Now I can go ahead and get into the list of 20 items that I like to keep stocked at all times. Now, these aren't in any particular order, but I am gonna go ahead and start with water because obviously water is very important. Now, according to FEMA, they recommend that you store at least one gallon per person per day for at least three days. So for my size family, that's a lot of water. So I've decided to store it in three different ways. We have smaller bottles of water if we have to grab them in a hurry. We have larger gallon sized bottles of water as well. And then I recommend that you look into having a water filtration system as well. We recently invested in this Berkey water filter and it works really well but they can be kind of pricey. So a less expensive alternative could be to go ahead and purchase yourself a Brita water filter pitcher. This is on the smaller side. You can usually find these at Target, Walmart. I know that Costco has a really good deal on them right now. If you get one of these, I recommend that you pick up some extra filters as well. 
next up in my food storage, I like to keep drink mixes, especially if you're having to filter your own water, it might still taste kind of funky. So I definitely recommend some simple drink mixes to make that water taste a little bit better. I found this big old thing of a Gatorade at Costco, and this will actually stay good on my shelf for at least one year. You could also stock up on some lemonade mix like these little guys here. These actually have a shelf life of two years if they're unopened. And you guys, even if you're not a fan of Tang, definitely think about getting some of this as well because it has a lot of vitamin C in it. And then finally, in my long-term food storage, I have a couple of these number 10 cans of drink mix. So this is basically like powdered Kool-Aid in here, and this drink mix can last up to 10 years. Also in the drink mix category, don't forget about things like hot cocoa. I like to keep some of this on hand. And of course, if you are a fan of tea or coffee, you're also gonna wanna stock up on those. Next up, I have my meals ready to eat category. So these are the types of food that you really want in an emergency because they're either ready right out of the can or you just have to add water. In my short term storage, I like to keep these bags of soup. I get these at Walmart and they're usually pretty inexpensive. These come in lots of different flavors and one bag makes about eight servings and they have a shelf life of about one year. I also like to keep lots of cans of soup on hand as well. Now, this is one of the items that always sells out if there's a hurricane headed our way, so I definitely like to stock up on these. I like the Campbell's. I like the Progresso. I really like the kind that has meat and veggies. And these have a really long shelf life too of about two years. Also in this category, I have some boxes of deluxe mac and cheese. And these are really great because they have about a one year shelf life and you don't have to add any milk or butter. The cheese is already ready to go. Next up on my list, I have beans and rice. Now I know these ones seem a little bit obvious, but I've actually store them a little bit differently. First up, let's talk about the beans. Now beans are actually a great source of protein and fiber and they last a long, long time. When it comes to beans, I like to stock up on smaller sized cans in all different varieties. These are great to add into so many different things. They have a shelf life of about one to two years, so they last a long time. I also went ahead and dry canned some beans of my own recently. This was actually a pretty easy process and I'll go ahead and link a video down below if you wanna learn how to do it yourself. And these can last for years if unopened. And speaking of years, check out these number 10 cans of beans. No joke, you guys, these say that they can last up to 30 years. Now let's move on to the rice. I have several different kinds of rice here. First off, in my short-term food storage, I like to keep some of these Noor brand rice pouches. Now, this is not something that we usually eat on a regular basis, but they do make really good quick emergency food. These are perfect to stock up on because they're also really inexpensive. I got these ones at Sam's Club and they were less than 70 cents per pouch. Another favorite of mine are these little bags of rice. I was able to find these at Walmart for just about a dollar a bag. They come in lots of different flavors and because of the kind of packaging that they're packaged in, they actually have a really long shelf life of up to two years. And here's a tip you guys, to keep all these little bags of rice organized and fresh, I like to actually put them in a food safe five gallon bucket. I add a nice tight lid on there to keep everything fresh. Now, just like with the beans, I also added rice to some mason jars with oxygen absorbers. And then I also have some number 10 cans of rice too. And just like the beans, this rice can last up to 30 years. Next on my list, I have fruits and vegetables. Now for my fruits, for my short term supply, I actually have a good stock of frozen fruit. Now I got these ones at Aldi's, so they were actually really affordable. And you guys, believe it or not, the dates on these packages say that they're good until 2022. Of course, if you keep them frozen, that is. Another thing I like to keep on hand are dried fruits. So things like raisins, apricots, mangoes, we love all of those especially Miss Lily here. And of course, if these are unopened, they can last anywhere between one to two years as well. Also in the fruit department, I have some smaller cans of fruit. 
and some number 10 cans of fruit. And these have a shelf life of pretty much the same time, about one to two years, whether they're big cans or small cans, it's pretty much the same. I also have lots and lots of smaller cans of veggies, but I did just buy the veggies that my kids prefer. So things like carrots and green beans, mixed vegetables, corn, things like that. These can last about one to two years on the shelf. And the same thing with the bigger number 10 cans. And my favorite place to stock up on these types of food items are either Aldi or Walmart. Okay guys, next up on my list is flour. Flour was one of those things that disappeared off the shelves a couple of months ago. First, I have a smaller container that I just keep in my pantry. Now, if you're someone who likes to use a lot of flour, think about getting yourself a food grade bucket like this. That way you can get a big old bag of flour from Costco and you can keep the entire thing fresh in here. And then as far as my long-term flour storage, I also have some in number 10 cans and these have about a 10 year shelf life. Now after flour, I have to talk about other baking ingredients and I'm gonna kind of lump this group together because you really just wanna store the type of baking ingredients that you like to have. I know for a while yeast was really hard to find, so I did go ahead and get several packages on Amazon. They were a little more expensive than they used to be, but this will definitely last me a long time. Definitely think about adding baking powder, baking soda, and baking mixes to your stockpile as well. These tend to only have about a one year shelf life, so I try not to stock up on these too much. Okay guys, next is I think my biggest category, which would be pasta and noodles, because you guys, my kids love pasta, pasta is cheap, and it can stay good for a super long time. Now first up, I definitely stocked up on the mac and cheese when they were on sale. These have a shelf life of about one to two years. The same goes for the ramen noodles. These again are super inexpensive. And you guys, if you take some of this ramen and add things like chicken or other veggies, it makes a really good dinner. Another way I store pasta is in these OXO containers. These keep things fresh for a super long time. I also have several plain boxes of pasta. And then for my super long-term food storage, I also have some pasta in number 10 cans. So these are macaroni noodles and then spaghetti bites and spaghetti bites are really just smaller pieces of spaghetti. Now of course to go with the pasta I also have a good supply of sauce. Of course you could make your own sauce if you want to but these ones from Sam's Club are pretty good. They have a shelf life of about two years. I also have several bottles of Alfredo sauce. These don't last quite as long just about one year on these guys. Back here I have some cans of pasta sauce. They have a two-year shelf life and then if I get to the point where I need to to make my own pasta sauce. I also have a few number 10 cans of both tomato sauce and crushed tomatoes so I can do that. And speaking of making my own sauce, I also recommend that you keep your favorite spices in your food storage. Now some spices don't stay good forever, but they really do have a pretty long shelf life. And if you buy these containers at Sam's Club or Costco, they're actually pretty inexpensive. And you guys, don't forget the salt. Salt is very important to stock up on. You need it in your diet and my favorite salt just happens to be this kind that comes from Utah. Next up is the milk category. Now I know a lot of people like to keep dry milk on hand but honestly I'm not a huge fan of dry milk so instead I went ahead and stocked up on these boxes of milk from the Dollar Tree. This is shelf stable milk so it can stay good on the shelf for one year. Also in the milk category I have some almond milk that can stay good for a year and then I also have several cans of evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk. Now that brings me to the oatmeal category and I have a pretty wide variety of oatmeals. In my short-term supply I have this big canister full of rolled oats. I also have lots of oatmeal packets. Now these don't stay good as long, just about six months to one year, but these are really great in an emergency because you really just have to add hot water. Also in the oat milk department, I have some in mason jars. These can last several years. And then also I have lots of number 10 cans full of oatmeal as well, and these can last 30 years. 
Oh yes, and as I'm going through these number 10 cans of items, you'll notice that some of them have lids on them. That doesn't mean that they're actually open. I just store the lids with the can so the lids don't get lost. Up next is the meat category. Now, as of right now, I don't actually have a lot of meat in my freezer, but I do have lots of canned meat. Now, I know not everyone's a fan of canned meat, but if it comes down to having canned meat or no meat, I'm gonna go for the canned meat. I have things like Vienna sausages. I have Spam, lots of Spam. I also have some cans of corned beef hash. Those are pretty tasty. And then I just have a couple of number 10 cans of freeze dried meat. These tend to be pretty pricey, so I don't have a lot in my stockpile right now. Up next is the sweet category. So things like sugar or honey. I definitely like to keep some of both in my stockpile. I just have this small container of white sugar. I do have some powdered sugar. I would like to go ahead and pick up some brown sugar as well. Of course, sugar can stay good for a long, long time, especially if you have some in number 10 cans like these. And then of course, honey also has a really long shelf life. In fact, I've heard some people say that honey really never goes bad, like ever. I'm not sure if that's true though. Now, as far as the oil goes, I have several different kinds in my stockpile. I have olive oil that lasts about a year. I have avocado oil that also lasts about a year. I have coconut oil, which has a two year shelf life. And then I also have some vegetable oil. Now, when it comes to vinegar, I like to keep plenty of white vinegar and apple cider vinegar in my stockpile. I actually have several bottles of each of these because I think they are really handy. Of course, apple cider vinegar has lots of health benefits. You can also make some delicious salad dressings. And the white vinegar, there are so many different things you can do with this. You can clean vegetables with it, make a multi-purpose cleaner, and sometimes I even like to add it into my laundry. Okay guys, now we made it to number 19, and this is kind of the potato category. One thing that I really like to stock up on are instant potatoes. These little packages here are really inexpensive. I find these for less than a dollar a bag at Walmart. And these are the kinds that you just have to add water. So they're really great in case of an emergency. They last about a year on the shelf and they come in lots of different flavors too. Also in my stockpile, I have some canned potatoes, which aren't my favorite, but they do last a long time, about two years for these. And then I also have some number 10 cans of potato flakes. And these also have up to a 30 year shelf life. Now that brings me to the peanut butter category. Now, of course, if you are allergic to peanut you can definitely leave this off your list, but peanut butter is an excellent source of protein. You can get it pretty inexpensively at most stores. And this has a really long shelf life as well for up to a year. Now you guys, I have just a couple of honorable mentions on this list. Things like cereal. Some have a surprisingly long shelf life, especially if it doesn't have any nuts in there or fruit. All of these cereals have a one year shelf life. Next in the honorable mention category is pancake mix. I really like the stock the kind where you just have to add water. Those are great in emergencies. These have about a one to two year shelf life. Okay guys, I wanna thank you if you've made it to the end of this list. I feel like I've been talking forever, but I hope this gives you some good ideas of where you can start if you are interested in building a food storage system for your family. Now let me know in the comments down below if you have any food storage tips because I'm always interested in learning more and I would love to know what what you've come up with. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.